Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. Lincoln Riley, USC, working their way through fall camp. And I think we have the biggest storyline to date during fall camp coming out of this USC practice. And that is Kobe Pepe emerging as a guy for USC in this 2024 season. Now, the USC fans who've been rocking with the fellas the last couple of weeks and months know that we've talked about just about every rotation and recipe that USC could employ on the inside of the defensive line. I don't think that we've mentioned Kobe Pepe's name once. Now, a lot of you guys in the comment section have, and I have to give you guys a massive shout out. That's one of the reasons I love talking this USC program. I learned a ton from you guys in the comment section. The way I looked at Kobe Pepe was that this kid is going into his fifth year within this USC program. He's only played 64 snaps during his collegiate career. I just didn't have a ton of optimism that all of a sudden Kobe Pepe would be a guy USC could rely on on the inside of the defensive line. And I just got to put my hand up and say, boy, was I wrong. And boy, is this a massive storyline for USC on the defensive line. Want to dive into, first of all, what kind of football player are we getting with Kobe Pepe? How does that impact this defensive line rotation, which I think is a massive storyline out of this kind of emergence. And then more importantly, want to give a few other shout outs to some players that are emerging during fall camp. Really excited to get into this one for the USC fans. Again, I feel like we've talked about just, just about every single angle of this depth chart. We haven't really talked much Kobe Pepe, so I'm excited to get into it. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Massive shout out to the USC fans. This is a program that you guys know I love talking about. The amount of support you guys continue to show to the boys in the comments section. That stuff means the world to us. So again, if y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Without further ado, let's get into Kobe Pepe. And let's start with what kind of football player Kobe Pepe is. And I think it starts with probably going to play a very similar role that USC envisioned Isaiah Riggs playing on this USC defensive line. That is that true nose tackle, that zero tech that's going to eat up double teams and make everybody's jobs and life a little bit easier on this USC defense. I think Easton Mascarenas Arnold really summed up the emergence of Kobe Pepe really well. And that is, hey, it's making our jobs as linebackers a lot easier. When you have a fire hydrant on the middle of that defensive line like Kobe Pepe, that's eating up double teams, that's not letting offensive linemen get to the second level, it suddenly gets so much easier for these linebackers to come downhill, play clean, and make their plays at or behind the line of scrimmage. Just a kind of body that you felt like USC didn't have enough of in 2023. If you get that kind of play from Kobe Pepe, again, it's not going to get reflected in the stat sheet. He's not going to be a guy that goes for 10-plus sacks and 10-plus tackles for loss but he's going to make the rest of this defense just run a little bit smoother. You look at all the best defenses from across the country. They all have these kind of guys on the middle of the defensive line, kind of the unsung heroes, the guys that nobody talks about according to the national media, but the guys that really make this defense run. If Kobe Pepe could be that guy for USC in 2024, I think that is probably the biggest storyline that we've gotten out of fall camp to date. So that's the kind of player Kobe Pepe is, right? At 6'2", 315, when you have that size and that low center of gravity, you can play with your low pads. You can win at the line of scrimmage. Kobe Pepe is not getting moved off the line of scrimmage. We call that a fire hydrant for a reason. It's hard to move a fire hydrant. That's going to be Kobe Pepe on the inside of the defensive line if he's as good as we're hearing from what he is in fall camp. I think the second storyline about the emergence of Kobe Pepe, and I think arguably the bigger storyline of all this, is maybe allowing USC to get more creative with a guy like Bear Alexander. We said Kobe Pepe is not going to be a guy that's filling the stat sheet with, sack, with sacks and tackles for a loss. Bear Alexander, he's one of those kind of defensive linemen. So right now, before the emergence of Kobe Pepe, Bear Alexander was probably going to have to play a lot of that nose tackle role, which is not necessarily ideal for your most disruptive interior defensive lineman, if you get really quality snaps from Kobe Pepe, maybe you can get a little bit more creative in terms of how you use Bear Alexander, putting him more at the three tech, letting him operate a little bit more in space, putting him in more positions where he can be that game wrecker that we know Bear Alexander can be. Now, speaking of Bear Alexander, Sean Nua had a lot of good things to say about Bear. And I think one of the things that we need to remind ourselves with Bear Alexander 
we feel like we've talked about him so long. He's only going into year three within his college football career. Last year was his first year within this USC program. You saw the flashes from Bear Alexander. What Sean Nua said today is he's becoming more consistent. And if we get a consistently game-wrecking Bear Alexander in 2024, that's another massive storyline. And if Kobe Pepe can emerge as a nose tackle that USC can trust on this defensive line, letting USC move around Bear Alexander and put him in more opportunities – to be that game-wrecking interior defensive lineman, I think that's a massive storyline. So not only are you getting better depth from Kobe Pepe, you're getting that kind of body we needed to emerge from USC's defensive line. You're also letting your best football player get in more spots to be an impact dude within this USC defensive line. Now, sticking on the defensive line, I want to talk about Carlin Jones. We talked about him a little bit a couple of days ago. Sean knew it was some really interesting conversations. Lincoln Riley gave him some love as well. I think where it starts with Carlin Jones and Sean knew said this in his press conference. When you have the mass, it is easy to get on the football field. A lot of times when you have these freshmen coming in along the line of scrimmage, the biggest thing that keeps them off the field is just not being big enough to play as an 18 year old kid. You look at Carlin Jones, kind of similar body type to Kobe Pepe, 6'2", 310 pounds. This kid's lower half is so, so thick. I think that Carlin Jones is going to be able to play in some sort of capacity for USC on the defensive line. And again, that's the biggest storyline we had for USC going into fall camp is what kind of name specifically on the inside of the defensive line are we getting to emerge? Kobe Pepe seems to be one, and uh, Carlin Jones seems to be one. Those are the two biggest storylines that I'm taking away from USC's fall camp. Now, I want to talk a little bit on the offensive side of the football where, you know, I kind of assumed that the starting USC offensive line was relatively locked up. It sounds like there's a position battle going on at that right, right, guard, right guard spot. I would still lean Alani Noah because I think he gives what USC is looking for on the offensive line. I think USC is going to lean on the run a little bit more. I think they are looking for physically imposing offensive linemen. Alani Noah is one of those guys. You look at USC and where I think this offense could just be a little bit more different from Miller Moss or from Caleb Williams to Miller Moss. I think they're going to lean on the run game more. I think you got a couple of really talented running backs and Woody Marks and Quentin Joyner. I think you have an offensive line that can be extremely imposing at the point of attack. I think that USC is going to lean on that run game more. And because they're leaning on that run game more, I would probably think Alani Noah gives them that most imposing kind of right guard to get that run game going. That suddenly becomes something to monitor for this USC program during fall camp. And I think the last two shout outs you got to give Jaden Maiava. He's going to be a really good football player for USC. I don't think it's going to be in 2024. I'm not even sure when it's going to be. When you give Lincoln Riley access to a quarterback that's as rawly gifted as Jaden Maiava, you look at Jaden Maiava, big body, big arm, phenomenal athlete. The sky's the limit for this kid. Now, we obviously went back to the film in 2023. There were some sloppy turnovers from a young quarterback that just maybe had a little bit too much confidence. We want Jaden Maiava to stay confident, by the way. I'm not telling him to lose his confidence, but I think what's so exciting about Jaden Maiava is you give him a year to marinate under Lincoln Riley, who has proven time and time again to develop quarterbacks. This might be one of the more talented quarterbacks that Lincoln Riley has worked with. Just watch out for Jaden Maiava, not necessarily in 2024, because, again, it sounds like Miller Moss really has taken command of this football team. I'm fired up to see what Jaden Maiava looks like at least some point down the line for USC. Last storyline, Eric Gentry at the linebacker spot. Again, one of my, what I was most excited about, we've talked about this, so I'll keep it brief. One of the things I was most excited about when Dan Lynn took over this USC defense was how different the personnel might get used. I always looked at Eric Gentry and said, I feel like they're just not tapping in to the potential Eric Gentry has. You're continuing to hear the stories about Eric Gentry getting moved all along this USC defense, specifically in the front seven, getting worked in as an edge rusher. Eric Gentry is one of the more physically unique prospect defense players that we see in the country. Dan Lynn is a genius at incorporating his talent. And so I just am going to continue to kind of listen and keep my ears to the tea leaves, so to speak, in terms of how Eric Gentry 
is getting used within this USC defense because I think this kid, the sky's the limit for him, and I think he's finally going to be put in positions that he can be an impact player for USC. That'll cut it for us. Kobe Pepe emergence, that's massive. We'll continue to monitor that as the next couple weeks go along. Again, appreciate you guys rocking with the fellas. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Appreciate you guys, and we'll talk to y'all later.